sex traffickers of children in the pre-Civil War South. Franklin and Armfield In the 1830s, Franklin and Armfield was the largest and most successful domestic slave trading firm in the United States. The firm made each of its two founders, Isaac Franklin and John Armfield, one of the wealthiest men in America. Until Franklin and Armfield, the slave trading business was disreputable and considered a fly-by-night industry. Franklin and Armfield turned slave trading into big business. The partners, Franklin and Armfield, turned the slave trading business into big business. The partners founded their firm in 1828 with, the equivalent in today's dollars, of $500,000 in startup capital. Franklin and Armfield had business lines of credit issued by major banks from New York to New Orleans. The firm's headquarters was on Duke Street in Alexandria, Virginia. The firm's headquarters was a massive walled compound that included a three-story, federal-style townhouse that served as the business office, separate housing and pens for male and female captives, kitchens, stables, a hospital, and a tailor shop in which enslaved women made clothing for captives to wear. The compound was similar to a penitentiary, with the same apparatus of high walls and bolts and bars to secure the prisoners. The firm kept guns and whips at the facility in order to maintain control of their captives. John Armfield took up residence at the Alexandria headquarters and oversaw the purchase of slaves. On a daily basis, the firm advertised for slaves in several Washington area newspapers. The ads read, Cash for Negroes and Cash in Market. The firm employed a vast network of agents and sub-agents who worked on commission. These headhunters scoured the Chesapeake Bay region, more than 20,000 square miles, seeking to purchase enslaved men and women between the ages of 12 and 25. The firm used its lines of credit to purchase thousands of slaves for cash from slave owners in the Chesapeake Bay region. Many of these slave owners were in financial distress due to declining tobacco production. The purchased slaves were brought to the firm's Alexandria headquarters and held within the walled compound. Within the walled compound, female slaves were frequently beaten and raped. When enough slaves were purchased, the firm transported these slaves to New Orleans, Louisiana or Natchez, Mississippi using its own fleet of three sailing ships. The firm owned facilities in New Orleans and Natchez to hold and sell slaves. Isaac Franklin lived in Natchez and later New Orleans and he oversaw the sale of slaves. In New Orleans and Natchez, the firm sold these slaves to slave owners on credit and made an enormous profit. Then, Franklin and Armfield repeated the cycle again and again. In 1831, the firm took on a third partner, named Rice Ballard, who oversaw the purchasing of slaves in the Richmond, Virginia region. Ballard would also become extremely wealthy. Franklin, Armfield and Ballard were all slave traders with many years of experience. As domestic slave traders, Franklin and Armfield transported a record number of slaves from the Chesapeake Bay region to New Orleans and Natchez. The firm transported 1,000 to 1,500 slaves per year. And over the firm's nine-year existence, it transported approximately 10,000 slaves. In today's dollars, Franklin and Armfield had gross receipts of millions of dollars annually. No other domestic slave trader came close. Unspeakable harm to slave communities. Slave trading caused unspeakable harm to the slave community by permanently separating loved ones and breaking up families. Slave traders separated husbands from wives and parents from their children. Slaves feared being sold to a slave trader. Rape culture. Slave traders would purchase young, light-skinned, female slaves and rape them before forcing them into prostitution or a life as a concubine. Since Armfield operated out of Alexandria and Franklin operated out of Natchez and New Orleans, and Ballard operated out of Richmond there is a lot of written correspondence between the three. The letters suggest that the three partners engaged in the systematic rape and abuse of the female slaves in their custody. The partners sought young, light-skinned female slaves for their customers and their own personal sexual gratification. The partners joked about their sexual adventures with the female slaves in their custody. Each partner had a child with a female slave in their custody. The partners also prided themselves in knowing what their customers desired. The partners wrote about providing teenage girls to their customers as sex slaves. 
Most of these female slaves in the firm's custody were children, as young as eight years old, and teenagers. Fancy girls became prostitutes and concubines. Slave traders called a young, light-skinned, female slave a fancy girl. The fancy girl trade was very lucrative. The firm could easily make a 100% profit on the sale of a fancy girl. Franklin and Armfield's goal was to supply fancy girls to its customers in the Deep South for the explicit purpose of sexual exploitation. The firm purchased young, light-skinned women for cash who they believed could bring them big profits at auction in the Deep South. Fancy girls were the most expensive category of female slave at slave auctions in places like New Orleans. Fancy girls sold for four to five times what a female field laborer would sell for at auction. Fancy girls on occasion could sell for as much or more than a prime male field laborer. At slave auctions, fancy girls were well-dressed and often wore jewelry. Franklin and Armfield would purchase young light-skinned, female slaves from slave owners in Virginia and Maryland. Once in the firm's custody, these young female slaves were routinely raped by the firm's staff. The firm would then take these fancy girls to New Orleans and sell them to slave owners for the explicit purpose of sexual exploitation. These female slaves would likely end up as prostitutes or concubines. False Veneer of Respectability Franklin and Armfield projected a veneer of respectability which allowed major banks and other established business institutions to do business with them. As Franklin stated, his firm can get money when no other trader can obtain a dollar. Yet, Franklin, Armfield and Ballard referred to themselves as robbers and pirates. They referred to themselves as one-eyed men, a euphemism for their penises. The partners obtained young female slaves for their customers in the Deep South, but also for their own sexual gratification.